United States of America has only two bordering powers, Canada and Mexico. And throughout our great country, there is always a feeling of friendliness toward these countries. This is a very unusual state of affairs in the world today. At present, the United States of America has a special reason to be thankful to her good neighbors. In a time of acute labor shortage, Mexico has sent over 100,000 of her young men to help us out on our farms. They have come from many parts of Mexico and are working in the Middle West, in the South, and in the West. They are called nationals, and large camps have been. They are under the jurisdiction of nationals, keeping our railroads in repair throughout our country. At the foot of Mount Hood, in the midst of the Oregon fruit country, near the town of Hood River, there is a large camp for 500 nationals. Some of the men stay all summer in one camp on the neighboring farms. However, the larger farms have their own camps for seasonal workers. And on these farms, the Mexicans live very close to our American homes and learn to know the way we really live. When the people of two countries become well acquainted, then the two countries have the best possible chance for international understanding. This is the story of Antonio, who lives on Mr. Brandt's farm. It is apple picking time. The Mexicans sing as they work, and from a distance it sounds as if the orchard was a large music box with the tops of the beautiful trees breaking into song. Antonio leads the singing. The Mexicans love music. It is part of their daily lives. Perhaps in America, they miss most of all the music of their homeland. And so, they bring us some of the beauty and charm that is Mexico. Molly Brandt likes the songs and will remember always these men who sing as they work. The fruit trees must be watered regularly, and Antonio spends many days working on the irrigation ditches. The men rotate the flow of the water so that each section of the farm receives its supply. They open the gates and direct the water into the ditches that flow into the orchards. The source of the water is snow-capped Mount Hood. The snow melts and rushes down the mountainside, forming rivers and streams. The large main irrigation ditches branch off from the river. A dam is built partway across the river and the water is directed into the large ditch. Gates at the mouth of the ditch control the water flow. These large ditches carry the water to all parts of the fertile valley. Molly thinks it's fun to play along the banks. Lots of things for a little girl to do. Interesting, too, how the smaller ditches break off from the main ditch. The wheel opens or closes the gate. Antonio and Tito have finished at the ditch and will now work in the orchards, clearing the small trenches called irrigating rills. Every part of the orchard must be watered, as the entire crop depends on the thoroughness of the irrigating. Mr. Brandt chose Antonio for this work because he is reliable and has good judgment. Molly likes to watch the water rush by, the swift current takes her playboats of twigs and leaves twirling down the stream. She likes to dream about when she will grow up and hopes she can visit this Mexico where the men are so kind and the people always sing. Antonio will go to town this afternoon. He asks Mrs. Brandt where he can buy some things that he needs. This Saturday, the men will stop work early and they have many plans for they have little time away from work. It is fun to go shopping in a foreign country, and Hood River is a very beautiful town. Antonio and his chum Felipe have a full day. But first, an ice cream cone. One of those quaint American customs. Mmm, tastes good. 
The American stores are different from those in Mexico, and there are certain things that they wish to take back home. Antonio buys a rainproof jacket. This store is full of things all men like, sporting goods, hunting and fishing tackle, and electrical appliances. They marvel at the electric ice boxes, sweepers, stoves, ironers, and so forth. So many things to make housework easy. They meet some old friends from Mexico. Would they like to take a boat ride? Oh, not this time. They're going to a movie. Antonio and Felipe have planned this boat ride for a long time. Mrs. Brandt suggested that they should see the river, as the Columbia River is famous for its beauty. They make friends easily with the American children. In Mexico, where the men live, they use paddles, and the men have difficulty trying to paddle with the long oars. It's all fun and just what the men need after a long week of picking fruit. Also, it's nice to get away from camp and talk over their impressions of the strange country. A boat ride in your own country is fun, but in a foreign country, it becomes a mysterious and exciting experience. Well, they'd like to stay longer, but they are to meet Mrs. Brandt. Antonio pays for the boat, and they start uptown. They tell their old friend Roberto all about the boat ride when they get there, and they ask him to drop around and see them. Now, here's Mrs. Brandt. The other men from the ranch went home earlier on the truck. They enjoy the ride home and like to see the beautiful surrounding country. And some of the men gather to study English. They go to an English class once a week, but still can speak only a few words and are dependent on making signs to say what they mean. But here's Antonio. What did he buy in town? Well, a short, light coat that is a windbreaker and will keep out the rain. Mm-hmm. They think he has made a very good buy. Felipe looks pleased. The men asked Mr. Buy them some shirts in the city. They couldn't find just what he wanted in the small town. Augustine knows exactly what he wants, but it's hard to say it in a strange language. He really must study harder. Now it's pear harvesting time. Antonio is careful not to hurt the fruit or pull off the stems. The spur is located at the base of the stem, and if it is injured, it would endanger next year's crop. Their old friend Roberto stops by for a chat. These pears are high priced and must arrive at the market with no bruised spots or scratches. Loading the boxes is heavy work, but these men are young and strong. Only men in good physical condition are sent to America with the nationals. This farm has 150 acres of fruit trees, and that means about 50,000 boxes to be picked. Trucks take the fruit to the farm packing house to be stored and packed. And so the season passes with its variety of crops, pears, plums, and apples. Several times a year, the fruit must be sprayed with arsenic of lead and oil to keep it free from bugs, worms, and plant diseases. The spray gun distributes the spray evenly over the apples. Before the fruit is packed, the apples are thoroughly washed in a big machine. Felipe brings Antonio a letter from Manuel, an old friend that lives in their hometown in Mexico. He joined up with the Nationals and was sent to a camp in California. They laugh over Manuel's account of his experiences in the strange country. Manuel was sent to a camp near the town of San Fernando, California. This camp houses 150 men who go out by the day and work on the different farms. The camp is in the center of many lemon and orange groves, and today 
Manuel is going to pick lemons. He and Pedro pick skillfully and joke as they work. Apparently, they have lots to talk over. They have become acquainted with American-Mexican families living in San Fernando and are planning what they will do next Sunday. These boys come from a cooler climate in Mexico and they find the days hot and dry, but they work hard and are healthy. They eat in the camp dining room and are served Mexican food. However, they get homesick and off long for Mexico. Cool water is kept on hand in the orchards and it tastes mighty good. These men really are happy. They are making good money and will have lots of tales to tell the home folks when they return. The Nationals also work in the orange groves across the road. In fact, this year, up and down the Pacific Coast, most of the farm work is being done by Mexican labor. Each crop is handled differently, and the Nationals working all over the country learn the many methods. America excels in mechanical improvements, and the men become familiar with our latest equipment. The picking boss calls out it's time to stop work. The men are always glad to return to camp. Their mascot, Old Lucky, goes along each day with the truck. He seems to feel that he too has done a hard day's work, but really he slept all day under a tree. He and Manuel are close friends, and Manuel will miss him when he goes back home. Back at the warehouse, the trucks unload their boxes of fruit. Several nationals from Pico Camp work in this plant. The nationals passed certain requirements before they were accepted. They had to be 21 years of age, in good health, and had experience working on a farm. However, many have worked at other trades, and so they represent a variety of types. Among the workers are men who have been factory workers, candy makers, teachers, barbers, and small shopkeepers. The men arrive back at camp next to the warehouse. In the evening, Manuel visits with an American-Mexican family that lives near. These birds remind him of his own pets in Mexico. And so through the season, the nationals work where they are most needed. Here they are picking in a tomato field. These foods will keep the United States well fed in the coming months. And just think, because of labor shortage, some of our crops have not been harvested. So you can see the help of over 100,000 Mexican nationals has made it possible to save many crops. This is true not in just one section, but in many parts of the United States. In the fields of Illinois and Iowa, in Michigan and Wisconsin, and in the cattle country of Nevada, and the cotton fields of Arizona. And don't forget the thousands of nationals helping on our railroads, keeping our railroads running, bending their backs to help America. These men are making friends all over America before returning to their homes in many parts of Mexico. They will tell their friends in Mexico about America. These many ties of friendship will form a lasting bond between the two countries, the strongest possible basis for good international relations. In the evenings, the men play baseball. They are practicing for a game with one of the other camps of nationals. They like American games and soon learn all the slang. Strike one. Aha, he hits it. Right over the plate and a miss. He doesn't mind. <laughs> now it's time to change sides. They're all looking forward to the American celebration of the day when Mexico first declared her independence. This day corresponds to our 4th of July. The big day arrives and a neighboring school decorates 
its float for the parade. This part of the city is made up of a large Mexican colony, and the people watch expectantly for the parade. The American school children, with their teachers dressed in Mexican costumes, might be a scene in Mexico itself. The Mexicans love horses. The nationals watch for the queen, and she really is pretty. Many receptions will be held. Mr. Kersey, the superintendent of the Los Angeles School Board, congratulates the queen. She is a lovely Mexican type. Mr. Kersey is a great student and admirer of Mexico. He encourages the studies in our schools that teach young people about Mexico. In the current American fashions, there's a marked Mexican influence in the dress designing, colors, scarves, silver jewelry, and styles of hairdressing. The Mexican consuls and other people who are important internationally enter into the festivities. Well, what's happening here? The winner of the prize baby contest, and what a champion. She has almost a perfect health record. And look at Miss Runner-Up. Soon, she will be wearing a big flower in her hair, Mexican-American style. In the evening, we have street dancing, especially the Mexican national dances. This is a day with fun for everyone. Maria likes this stunning officer, and he seems to like Maria. There are celebrations in many parts of the city. The nationals visit the small booths with their Mexican goods. What fun, especially after the long days on the farms. Polly talks Spanish, and Manuel is pleased. Mexican flags are flying in the plaza, the old town square. Throughout our country, many buildings show a Spanish style in their architecture. When the nationals arrive at this station, one of the first things they see is this section of the city. Across from the station, the post office terminal building is an example of Mexican influence. To Mr. Brant's farm, where the fall leaves are turning. Antonio, Augustine, and Jose walk back to their camp. They meet Mrs. Harding, who has charge of their camp. They often play with her grandchild and have made many plans to keep in touch with her after they go home. They gather around for a last song while they wait for the truck. Antonio sings lustily. He hopes to come back another year, but he's happy now because he will soon go home. And now it is goodbye. Mr. and Mrs. Brandt wish they could keep the men permanently on their farm. Antonio, Augustine, Enrique and Lorenz, their faces reflect the depth of their feeling. They will remember this adventure always. And so the truck leaves for the larger camp.
From these camps, the men leave on special trains for Mexico. And look at the brand new coats, boxes, and cases, brim of America for Mexico. Surprises for their loved ones. But most of all, they take in themselves a little that is America and leave with us a lasting impression of their charm and the way of life in Mexico. Thank you.